Yeah, I think it's strong enough. It's, okay. Okay, let's pray. Yeah. Father, we, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this, uh, for the words that we read just now. Lord, we thank you that uh, for the assurance, Lord, that uh, you are the one who builds. You are the one who protects. And uh, we thank you that uh, you're the one who builds our life. You're the one who builds our family. Lord, you're the one who protects the household. You're the one who's uh, our protector. And uh, Father God, we, we just open our hearts to invite you and uh, to, uh, to, to do the work of building, God. Uh, we just give you permission. We just love you, God. Lord, to do that and have your own way. And um, I pray that in whatever areas, Lord, that uh, our families need building, Lord, in whatever areas that our household, oh God, requires, oh God, your touch. Master, we pray that you would step in, Lord, and uh, have your way, Father God. We pray that, um, Lord, that there will be protection, that there will be building. I pray that uh, there will be, Lord, your touch, your hand, Father God, in all those areas, Lord, which need, Lord, the ministry, the work, the transformation of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Father God, where there is uh, hurt, Lord, that there be healing, where there is, uh, Lord, need for forgiveness. Father God, we pray for grace and strength to extend forgiveness and to receive forgiveness, Lord. Master, where there is a need for wisdom, Lord, for the way ahead, uh, Lord, we pray for, Lord, your leading, your guidance, and where there is a need for, Lord, total transformation, breaking down of strongholds, and and uh, Lord, breaking down of chains that are, that are holding people, Lord, captive. Father, we pray that you would step in and, Lord, let there be freedom. Let there be freedom, and Lord, we pray, God, let your kingdom come and your will be done. Can we can we all just pray that you know for our own lives, uh, for our families, uh, for our households, and uh, just say, Lord, let your kingdom come, let your will be done. So He is inviting the rule and reign of the King, and the rule and reign of the King is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. It is justice, and um, uh, it, it brings in the the, the the work of the Holy Spirit. It results in love and joy and peace, gentleness and patience and kindness and goodness. And so let's just pray, Father God, come, have your way, Lord. Have your way. We thank you. We thank you. We bless your name. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Um, just give me a minute, please. Okay, we've uh, almost come to the, you know, the end of uh, our uh, sessions here, and uh, we're going to be looking at uh, today. We're going to be looking at another important aspect, which is chapter thirteen, chapter twelve. I just uh, recommend that you go through, um, but chapter thirteen um, um, is quite important, especially for those who are married. And also for those who are, who are preparing, you know, for for marriage, it would uh, it would really make sense. Let me just uh, take the PowerPoint out. Just give me a minute. Um, so we are talking about uh, boundaries here. Um, talking about uh, well, it's a rather important aspect because uh, uh, a boundary, if you can, you know, if you can think of it as a wall as a fence um, well it uh, keeps something out and it keeps something in right um, just think of uh, you know the, the, the olden days uh, in biblical times uh, we see that a wall was very important because uh, something uh, a city without a wall uh, even in proverbs it says that uh, a person who is quick tempered uh, is uh, is like a city without walls, in the sense that um, he's uh, he's going to come down, right? He's, he's making his life or her life vulnerable. Um, so, uh, so the the Bible says that a person without um, uh, without I mean, I mean with a who's quick, but is like a is like a city without walls. 
uh, one does not have fence and so on. So um, a fence a wall is very important. It, it's, uh, it's actually a protection. Yes, it restricts. Um, there is a sense of, uh, you know, what you can do, what you can't do. There is a sense of, uh, uh, I can't go beyond this point, right? Um, but it's there for a purpose and uh, it is uh, for one's good. So um, let me just share the PowerPoint and we'll... Um, Just a minute. Um, okay. Right. So, so we're looking at boundaries. Um, yeah. Um, so this is an old uh, series. So the date you mentioned you see is 2015. Um, yeah. Okay. So um, so for married people, you know, let's say a couple, married couple, um, they are married, and uh, let's say it's a very ideal situation, and uh, you know they are totally in newly married. They are totally in love with each other. They respect honor, you know each other. They're doing everything, um, everything by the by the word of God, and uh, everything's going fine, right? Now we know that, like we saw in the earlier chapter, that uh, there are challenges, there are you know, uh, difficulties that would come one's way, and totally unexpected. Um, so a good marriage does not insulate or um, you know, keep a person, keep a couple, you know, um, outside of all these kind of challenges. So one of the things that a marriage does not insulate a person is um, the human fleshly desire or a person's uh, uh, unrenewed thinking or, you know, it does not prevent them from being attracted to the opposite gender. Right, Either, uh, it could be a sexual attraction, it could be an emotional attraction. Um, it does not a good marriage doesn't insulate. So you know there would there would there could be a thought, there could be a, you know a, an attraction, and it has to be dealt with right then and there. Okay, so a married person can still um, be attracted to see another attractive uh, person whom they are not married to so it is it is quite possible um, it could be um, you know it could be um, something that is uh, emotional in the sense where we that person is caring that person is very loving um, this person is very friendly and uh, and and actually you know you're drawn to that person or maybe that person is very attractive physically um, and uh, just because you're married doesn't mean that you may not be attracted but the fact is that um, we need to guard our hearts and minds. Right? We need to guard our hearts and minds. You know, the the thoughts could come. Uh, there could be even, uh, you know, a suggestion or a temptation by the enemy. Um, so these thoughts could come. But we need to guard ourselves. We need to protect ourselves. Right? We need to guard our minds, our emotions, our affections, and uh, and especially to those of us who are involved in Christian ministry, right? Because we, uh, we would be interacting with people uh, of, uh, you know, many kinds of people. And so uh, we need to be uh, aware. We need to be, um, uh, you know, uh, alive to the fact that, yes, this could happen. And we need to be true to ourselves, right? When these kind of thoughts, when these kind of suggestions come uh, and you you catch yourself thinking on those lines, you catch yourself meditating on things that you're not supposed to be, that we're not supposed to be, you know, giving time and, uh, and also mind space, right? Um, when you catch yourself doing that, then, um, then 
don't override that in the sense you know don't say okay it's fine it's fine to think on these lines don't say that right? it's okay right so this is um, this is how uh, a, a breakdown happens a breakdown in relationship a breakdown in intimacy um, in a marriage uh, this is how it starts it starts in a very simple manner it starts with a thought it starts with um, just like we see how meditation uh, i mean sorry temptation unfolds in james chapter 1 we see that step it starts with a thought it starts stirs up our desire and um, and the th and the thing is it's natural it's natural to uh, appreciate beauty. It's natural to be, you know, drawn to someone's intellect. Maybe uh, it's natural to be, you know, to to be um, to appreciate one's kindness and compassion. Maybe um, or you know, and whatever it is, right? It's you notice it, and it's uh, you cannot not notice, right? But the fact is that uh, uh, when we notice and when we realize that we are being drawn into that we are spending a lot of time thinking right uh, we are drawn into it we are lured into it then we need to be careful okay so um an affair or extramarital when we say it's outside of marriage uh, unfaithfulness so it starts in this manner and right? so we need to um we need to have our have our guard up we need to um, be sensitive to uh, the Holy Spirit's warning, the red flags that the Holy Spirit, you know, puts up, and we need to work on those lines. We need to uh, be obedient. Okay, so so how does it start? It starts with the thought. It starts with the thought because let's say you know a typical work situation maybe or a ministry situation where uh, you know you are you know talking to a colleague and you notice something uh, that is good about that colleague you know that is that is worth complimenting right it's now these are good things right maybe that person is very um, you know uh, you appreciate that person's intellect you appreciate that person's humor uh, or maybe you notice that the person is uh, you know good looking um, maybe their skills and abilities you you notice that and you appreciate that which is fine right but then what happens is if you are married and you begin to compare you begin sorry to compare your uh, that person with your spouse right you begin to compare that person with your spouse and say okay um yeah my spouse is not like this but this person is actually you know better in these areas you know my spouse Spouse actually speaks very harsh words, and well, you know, this person is so kind and compassionate. My spouse is is not so good looking, and uh, you know, doesn't take any effort to, um, you know, to look good. But then this person is, you know, so good looking, and then the kind of effort just comes across. Um, and uh, you know, my spouse does not spend time talking, or does not take an interest, um, uh, as much interest as this person takes in in my work. Okay, or, or in my hobby, or, or uh, the things that I'm interested in. You know, all these thoughts. Okay, so it it starts with uh, starts with the genuine appreciation, but then we need to be careful that it uh, it doesn't go into comparison. Right. So we begin to uh, compare, and then we um, what happens? Okay, let me just change the. Sorry. Um. Yeah. So uh, so this is the. Uh, you know this is the degradation or the downward spiral okay so it's a it's a so we begin to notice certain things and then we appreciate it and it's a casual friendship fine everything's good um then um because you're comparing and because um maybe you know one if one is dissatisfied in their own marriage then then you begin to get emotionally attached Okay, you begin to long for those conversations. You begin to long, uh, wait for those uh, moments to see that person, to maybe to wish that person, or uh, just to you know casually chat. So it's there's a you know emo, uh, there's an affection, uh, and then there is an emotional um, uh, entanglement. Okay, so you're just spending more and more time thinking about this person, and makes you feel good. Right? And spending more and more time. Um, maybe uh, with that person, right? Um, and you, maybe you're, uh, you know, making plans to be with that person. And all this happens. Now we're talking about married couples here. 
right so um and there is a uh, increasing communication um, communication in the sense um, well you're talking and maybe there's a phone call maybe there is a, there are texts that are happening and all this is happening and uh, when you say emotional entanglement we are you know we are opening up our lives and our emotions and uh, maybe um, sharing things about ourselves about our lives um, to that person uh, which is probably is should be reserved for a spouse right for our spouse so we're talking about some innermost things and and maybe even things that we don't share with our spouse you're sharing with this this person right whom we are not married to and therefore it becomes an emotional attachment and emotional entanglement okay. so what would happen soon after that is that um, um you, you know uh, would it would it it would lead to physical affection okay meaning there is a physical contact physical touch and maybe you know maybe a, you you just waiting to shake hands with that person you know shaking hands is uh, as a wishing you know as a form of wishing is so, it's very harmless but in your mind you just waiting to shake hands and maybe put your arm around the shoulder of that person whatever you know so um so there's a lot of you know this is going on and uh, and also uh, maybe you know in all this communication that's happening uh, there's a lot of secrecy right um well would the question to ask is uh, you know all your texts and chats with this person uh, how uh, you know how would you feel if your spouse went through that okay if maybe if it's a chat maybe it's a, you know an email exchange uh, how would your spouse feel if if he or she went through that or the other thing is you know would you feel confident just handing over your phone or your you know email or you know just with with your spouse saying okay it's fine just go with go, just go through it would you feel confident doing that or is there something that you need to hide is there something that you need to delete before handing over the phone like these are indicators that oh yeah there is an emotional attachment and there is a sense of secrecy which you know there's something that is building um like a wall you know that is taking away that um, transparency um in, in marriage the trust and transparency in marriage right so so it becomes a emotional attachment it, it would soon lead to physical affection a physical attachment and uh, resulting in uh, sexual involvement so there's a you know it doesn't just start with the sexual involvement it just starts with a casual friendship okay so um well why do these things happen um there could be um you know uh, some marriages and people in a marriage could be let's say particularly vulnerable for this why because maybe there's a lot of um lot of turmoil in the marriage okay um well this whole process of becoming one you know it's it's uh, where well, it's it's definitely a process it's a journey and it's uh, and it's not smooth sailing right we saw that uh, two different people and but you made a covenant you made a commitment and uh, you see that the personality wise you know it's like one person is short tempered one person is uh, maybe the other person is not the other person is understanding uh, the other person is not and and all these things right so maybe it's because of some kind of hurt that has happened in the marriage is some kind of turmoil current thing that is happening um secondly people whom we interact with maybe in a work workplace uh maybe in any other kind of a thing could have different moral standards right for them it's no big deal you know you're a believer you made a commitment in the presence of god in the presence of god's people um saying that you will do this that you are committed till death to us part and in all seasons of life you know in sickness and in sorrow and in pain and all that um made a commitment saying that yes uh, i will 
uh, you know, abide, I will, I will be committed and you know, made a commitment. But the problem is that um, you've not, uh, the other person may not necessarily have the same standards, moral standards. For them, maybe they don't even have any moral standards. There's this, you know, so you need to be careful. And uh, for some others, it could be, you know, it could be just a, a sense of entitlement, a sense of, uh, you know, a sense of pride. Maybe, you know, you are, uh, uh, let's say, for example, you know, you are in your, uh, um, uh, you know, you're not necessarily a very young person. Maybe you are, you know, uh, in your 40s, in your 50s, uh, in your 60s, whatever. And then here comes this person who's younger, who seems to be interested in you, who is hanging on to every word that you're saying and and all that, right? So, so you just feel, okay, there's something missing in my life and this is happening, okay? even though, you know, one could be married. So, um, so this happens. Right? So these are different scenarios why, uh, you know, someone drops their guard or uh, is not really clear about the boundaries. Right? Um, so, so when we're talking about, uh, you know, moments, vulnerable moments, this could be some scenarios, but broadly, it could be, um, just a minute, please. Um, Broadly, it, it could be because a person, um, you know, when, when is when is someone particularly vulnerable? Okay, particularly vulnerable. Um, it it could be when everything is going fine. You know, there's nothing wrong. Everything is going fine. You're very, uh, you know, you're successful in life. Um, that is also a moment to be uh, to be careful, right? When we are confident, we are, you know, we are, everything is going fine, we're successful, and and that's a moment to be, um, uh, that's a vulnerable moment to be careful because that's when we let down our guard. We think, okay, right, um, and we compromise. Um, also, we it could be a moment when we are emotionally down, when there's a lot of crisis happening, a lot of struggles, challenges, and emotionally we are down, and we. We feel that it's okay. Right? So both extremes, uh, both are particularly vulnerable moments. Okay. So um, the word of God has uh, something to say, as enough warnings. Right. When we read in the Proverbs, uh, in the book of Proverbs, we see you know, it's like uh, when we give in to. Uh, of course, this could work both ways, both genders. So you know, a person seducing here it's a female gender right seductress so uh, proverbs 7 talks about that you know how that happens uh, tempted with the charms given into smooth talk and so you see you know physical attraction uh, conversation words right so uh, it says here so, verse 22 suddenly he was going with her like an ox on the way to be slaughtered like a deer prancing into a trap where an arrow would pierce its heart uh, he was like a bird going into a net. He did not know that his life was in danger. And uh, it says, you know, listen to me, pay attention to what I say. Do not let such a woman win your heart. Don't go wandering after her. Um, she has been the ruin of many men and caused the death of one too many to count. So, so this would, um, uh, you know, yeah. So this would be, um, this would be true uh, for married people and this would also be true you know this warning is applicable to people who are single as well right um, so where well it's it's not something that is long term it is outside of god's uh, you know god's bounds boundaries and uh, god's standards of holiness uh, it's outside of all that right so it could be uh, it could happen for single people also right so um, like you said, we need to be on guard during times of personal crisis or great time of triumph. Um, Second Samuel 11 talks about David, the example of David, who was, uh, you know, when everybody had gone for war, he, he actually, um, he had, he was, uh, he had taken a nap. It was, in the, it was, it says, uh, Second Samuel 11 and verse two says it was late afternoon. So he had, you know, had a nice meal, he had had a nap, and then it says he, 
he got up from his nap and was strolling on the roof of the palace. So everything was fine. He was uh, at the top of his, uh, we can say, career, his uh, life as a, as a king, and everything was going fine. There was a good army, and he was winning those battles, and everything was fine. And then this happened, you know, this temptation and, uh, and fall, uh, and his sin with Bathsheba, right? Okay, so we need to, what are those boundaries right, that we can um, keep? First thing is to have this understanding that you know, the marriage is a good thing. Right? We are, maybe we are working at it, and, uh, but it's a good thing. Marriage, it's a commitment. You've made a commitment, and it's a good thing in the eyes of God. Right? It's, uh, um, it's, it's the right thing. Right? And that intimacy and everything that your heart longs for is to be fulfilled in a marriage relationship and not outside of it. Right? Um, so uh, the thing is, don't trade that. Don't exchange that for something which is temporary. Right, something that is going to cause a lot of pain. It might be, uh, it might seem exciting. It might seem fulfilling even in the in the in that moment, right? But it but you know that it's going to be momentary. Right? It is going to be a moment. Sometimes it is just well, it would be just um, you know it might. We we looked at that um, you know that downward spiral. Now that downward spiral could could takes maybe. A long time to happen, right? but at each uh, let me just put that. Um, yeah, but at each stage, you know, if you look at that second stage and the third stage and the uh, uh, and the fourth one, uh, you, you are losing ground, right? and uh, you are. Um, what is happening is that we are actually losing out on actually building trust and transparency and intimacy with our spouse. And we are actually trading that. There's a compromise that is happening, right? So there is a breaking down of one side and why, at the same time, you're building something that should not be built, right? So, um, so it's, and, and the thing is that there, it, is, it is a waste of time. It is a waste of time because you're putting your time and effort into something that is going to be counterproductive to the marriage. Right? It is going to hurt the marriage. Uh, it is going to, uh, you know, we, we, we just feel okay. I, I, well, I'm not sinning anyway. I, I'm not. I'm not actually sinning. I'm not physically involved. But look at the nature of the text or email or the conversation that's happening. You know, uh, is your heart opening up? To that person, right? Um, and for single people, you know, when we when we if we want to apply this, I mean, talking about boundaries, it could be that okay, you know that that person, um, you know, is uh, is not God's plan for you. Okay, maybe the person is not a believer, doesn't have the same values that you have, totally incompatible. But for some reason, you are interact uh, you are attracted because of various things, you know, maybe that person is funny, maybe that person is, you know, uh, good looking, whatever. So if you find yourself opening up your heart to that person, then, you know, just check what is going on in your thought life, what is going on in your imagination, what is going on in your communication, right? Because um, communication is a bridge, right? It's a bridge between two people. So you're exchanging thoughts, ideas, uh, feelings, emotions. And so communication is a bridge. So just you know, look into that aspect. Okay, what am I communicating? What am I sharing? What is that person communicating and sharing? Um, so uh, that's the thing. So um, if you look at, um, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be, a, it's a waste of time. So don't trade that intimacy. Um, and uh, you know, uh, Proverbs again talks about a, a lot about that. Proverbs five um, verses one to twenty-three. Uh, uh, you know, most of that chapter it's it's about this. So you know, we can take time to look into it. Um, um, here's the warning. You know, verse fifteen. 
It says, do, do you know the saying, drink from your own rain barrel, draw water from your own spring fed fell, right? Um, verse 20, why would you trade enduring intimacies for cheap thrills? Okay. Now, look at adultery itself. Okay, we say adultery, we're talking about uh, an extra rital um, relationship. And uh, uh, definitely adultery, it means that it's a, it's a physical relationship. Um, but also, we know that emotionally, um, you know, we can commit an act of adultery, right? Because we may not be physically involved, but we are emotionally if we are emotionally involved um, with that person. Now that is also, it is an emotional adultery because you are you have actually crossed certain lines in, in sharing certain information, in speaking certain things, right? Um, what you need to uh, share and speak within the context of marriage, you're actually doing that outside. Right? So it's a, it's a, it destroys our soul, it destroys our emotions, destroys our thinking, and ultimately destroys our marriage. Okay, Proverbs 6, for sound advice is a beacon, good teaching is a light, moral discipline is a life path. They'll protect you from wanton women, from the seductive talk of some temptress. So again, you know, this is referring to um, a person who's seducing being a woman, but it, it could very well be a, a man as well. Okay. Here's the warning, 25, verse 25. Don't lustfully fantasize on her beauty, nor be taken in by her bedroom eyes, um, and, and so on. You know? So um, verse 30, you know, hunger is no excuse for a thief to steal. When he's caught, he has to pay it back, even if he has to put his whole house in hawk. Meaning, you know, sometimes there's a lot of justification or most times, you know, why did this happen? Okay, um, why why did this happen? Why did you do it? Well, there's a lot of justification given, and and the thing is that, well, the spouse was not understanding. The spouse was, uh, uh, you know, was uh, was not really um, uh, was not being a good companion. The spouse was not interested in you know all those but the thing is the act of adultery is sin okay no matter how much uh, reasonings we can give or justifications we can give it is as if a thief who has been caught while stealing right no matter how much uh, whatever reasons he gives the fact is that he stole right and uh, he will be punished there will be justice so uh, you need to remember that, right? Uh, that adultery is uh, a soul-destroying act. It is self-destructive. Okay. Um, again, for uh, this again works for both men and women, but Scripture has something to say, particularly for women. Uh, Proverbs twelve four: A good wife is a husband's pride and joy, but a wife who brings shame on her husband is like a cancer in his bones. Um, Proverbs fourteen one. Homes are made by the wisdom of women, but are destroyed by foolishness. Now, this would work for the man as well. Right? Um, and then there's one more scripture, uh, which is uh, Proverbs 30 and verse 20. Uh, this is how an unfaithful wife acts. She commits adultery, takes a bath, and says, I haven't done anything wrong. Okay, So, um, so the, the possibility of someone to become so deceived that they sear their conscience and uh, you know step out of the boundaries of marriage and uh, come into adultery okay so it is possible then the other uh, the boundary or uh, safeguard is to dress modestly okay uh, especially when it comes to men men are visually um, influenced, right? And that's how God is wired for the man to be visually, uh, you know, be attracted to his wife, 
PCs and the like. So um, men are visually uh, influenced. Uh, and if you look at the advertising industry, you know, you would see why um, there are these products, there are these services, and we find that, well, you know, sometimes you wonder, you know, why is there a scantily dressed person in the in the advertisement? Right? It is because well, men are visually, you know, it grabs the attention, and they are visually involved, influenced, and they may be probably they may take make an emotional decision, purchase decision, like an emotional buying decision. Right? So you see that. Right. So uh, it is important for the women to to dress well, to dress modestly, and uh, of course, a uh, lot of scripture again about modesty. First um, Timothy two, Paul writes to Timothy and says, "You know, I also want the women to be modest and sensible about their clothes." This is the Good News version, and to dress properly not with fancy hairstyles or with gold ornaments or pearls or expensive dresses, but with good deeds as is proper for women who claim to be religious. Um, so modesty uh, in everything, moderation, right? Um, so, well, there's nothing wrong with the hairstyle. There's nothing wrong with uh, ornaments, pearls. There's nothing wrong with, uh, you know, good dresses or even you know, expensive dresses, but the fact is to be modest and sensible, to be modest and to live a life uh, in moderation. Now, that's that's very important, right? Okay. Um, okay. Let's look at something. Let's say uh, one has fallen in this area. Okay. Um, no proper boundaries. The boundaries have been stepped over, and therefore, you know, this maybe it's um, emotional attachment, or maybe it's uh, adultery, full blown adultery. Um, well, maybe it's a momentary thing, maybe it's a long term thing that has happened. What do we do? It's very important. What do we do? And uh, and the important question is, you know, is there a way out? Right. Is there a way out, or is it doomsday? Right. Um, well, the the good news is there is hope. Okay. Um, there is hope. There is uh, restoration if one would be willing to walk that path. Now it's going to take a lot, emotionally, mentally. Right. Uh, it's going to take a lot, but it is possible. It's um, there will be pain, but it is possible. Okay, so some of the things that we see is that um, you know, well, we can come back if we don't give up. We can be restored if we continue to trust in the Lord and work and obey um, the steps that He is putting out. You know, that we walk the path that He's putting out. Um, like if you look at uh, you know the prodigal son coming to the senses and coming back to the father. Well, we see that uh, the father actually ran. Right? The father ran towards the the son just because he uh, he said, "Yeah, I want to go back to my father's house." So the, the so the father ran. So there is hope for genuine repentance and wanting to come back, right? uh, and and the Lord will lead, but. There needs to be, uh, you know, decisive steps taken, and uh, one of those uh, things, uh, uh, of course, to be assured of uh, God's love, and uh, you know, to take that step, um, and knowing that the Holy Spirit will will restore things. We see in Isaiah, we see that He gives us beauty uh, in the place of ashes, and so. Well, it is all possible, but there's some things that we need to do. At um, that scripture, very very clearly puts out that there needs to be a cutting off. There needs to be a very strong uh, action. Okay, so we cannot continue to be in that extra marital relationship, or make 
you know, cosmetic changes saying, okay, I will continue to be in touch. I will continue. We are just good friends now and continue to hope that well, the marriage will work. It will not. Okay. Look at the Matthew chapter five. Okay. Um, you have heard that it was said, do not commit adultery. But now I tell you, anyone who looks at a woman and wants to possess her is guilty of committing adultery with her in his heart. Verse 29, so if the right eye causes you to sin, take it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose a part of your body than to have your whole body thrown into hell. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it out. It is much better for you to lose one of your limbs than to have your whole body go off to hell. So what does that mean? So that means that there needs to be a very, very determined surgical decision, uh, a hard decision to stop, okay, to stop what we're doing, okay, to say that, okay, I realize that, you know, I'm emotionally involved with this person, I need to cut now, okay, I need to cut, break free. So first thing is to recognize, okay, recognize that yes, these are the choices I've made and because of these choices, I am where I am. Okay, second thing, to repent and to reverse those choices. You know, repentance is basically that, right? You're reversing something. Um, you're, you're turning away and you're going back. So repent, first recognize, repent. And, um, you know, at this point, when we are repenting and when we are turning away, there could be, you know, suggestions from the enemy or from our own unrenewed flesh. You know, maybe it's okay. Maybe it's okay to just remain in touch. Maybe it's okay to just, uh, you know, talk about, talk with that person, you know, with whom you are emotionally involved or, you know, had that extramarital affair, you know, just to be there and, and you know, uh, how will that person feel or, you know, we've shared so many things now and then uh, suddenly I'm cutting away and the, there's a lot of maybe crying happening. Oh, I'm feeling sorry for that person. All that, right, uh, would, yes, it would happen. But if you want to save the marriage and if you want to do the right thing, the right thing to do is to cut off. And to cut off, maybe to explain to the person and say, and to confess and say, it was wrong, or I did was wrong, but I'm just turning off, uh, turning back. Now, it, it's not going to be easy. Uh, maybe one would need the help of maybe a counselor, maybe a pastor, maybe a mentor, whatever, you know, but uh, well, you can do it alone, but then, you know, if, if there's help required, you need to take that and uh, take that, you know, hard choice, hard decision, right? Okay, so uh, we'll stop here, and then we'll come back um, and continue in 10 minutes, right? Thank you.